Last time we looked at how the frequency of a wave and a wavelength were related. We said if you've got a short wavelength, then lots of waves can go past in one second, so you get a high frequency. If you've got a long wavelength, it takes longer for a wave to go past a point, so you get fewer waves per second. That's a lower frequency. And if you think about it, that all depends on how fast the waves are moving in the first place. Now with light waves, they all move at the speed of light, known as C. It's 3 times eight, 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's 3 with 8 zeros on the end. What's that? That must be 300 million meters each second. It's pretty fast. And it's the same anywhere in the universe. It's a constant. And you may have some reference materials that list useful constants that you can look up. It's the same every time. So if you take, if you remember that a small frequency means you've got a big wavelength, and a big wavelength means you've got a small frequency, and a high frequency means a small wavelength, you can see that if you multiply these two together, you always end up with the same thing. That's the rule. So if this stays the same, if the frequency goes up, the wavelength must go down. And this is a, a useful piece of math to help you convert frequencies into wavelengths. And it's simply the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, equals the frequency times the wavelength as long as the wavelength's in meters. And that's really important. Because light waves are so small that we often measure the wavelength in nanometers, which are much smaller. And we have to change those to meters or else the math doesn't work. So here's, here's a simple conversion. One meter, like a meter stick, has 100 centimeters in it. So if we wanted to express one centimeter in meters, we'd say it's one meter divided by a hundred, because there's a hundred centimeters in each meter. It's one divided by a hundred, which is the same as one divided by ten times ten. This might remind you of scientific notation. It's one times ten to the minus two. It's minus 2. It's 2 because there's two tens, 10 times 10. And it's minus 2 because we divided by 10 times 10. That's much more important when we're dealing with nanometers. There's a billion nanometers in a meter. So one nanometer is 1 divided by a billion meters. Which is 10 times 10 times 10, 9 times. So a short way to write that is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Now, if you had 20 nanometers, it would be 20 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. If you had 723 nanometers, it would be 723 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So, to change your, nano, your nanometers into meters, you multiply by 10 to the minus 9. Let's look at an example, putting those two things together. So, what is the frequency of light which has a wavelength of 360 nanometers? So first of all, we've got a frequency and a wavelength. That means we need this equation, where C equals the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. F is the frequency, and that's what we're being asked. And lambda is the wavelength, which they've told us is 360 nanometers, which we need to put into meters. So that's 360 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And if you're not clear on this bit, 
rewind a little bit and look again at how at the end of where I was talking about nanometer conversions. So C is 3 times 10 to the 8. F, we don't know, so we'll call it F. Lambda, the wavelength, is 360 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So we've got this far now. And now we've just got to do our basic algebra. Remember, chemistry math is simple math. It's just got scary numbers in it. So we've got F times 360 times 10 to the minus 9. We want to get F by itself. So we've got to undo what was done to it. It was multiplied by 360 times 10 to the minus 9. So we're going to divide it by 360 times 10 to the minus 9. And we do the same thing to both sides. So now these two cross that cancel out. And we're left with F equals 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 360 times 10 to the minus 9. Which we just need to put into our calculators. Remembering to use the E button. 3E8 divided by 360 E negative 9. If you put the whole ten times 10 to the minus 9, unless you use parentheses, your order of operations may mess up and you get the wrong answer. Use the E button. It's just the right thing to do. Let's just think, what should our number look like? We want the frequency. We want to know how many waves of light are going past in one second. Little heads up. It's going to be a huge number. It's going to be like something times 10 to, I don't know, 15, 19, 20. It's going to be a lot of waves going past per second. If you don't get that, then you've done something wrong when you're calculating this. Here's another equation. These equations are often on a formula chart. Energy equals HF. E is energy. This is the energy of a wave of a certain frequency. H is another constant named after a guy called Planck. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. F is the frequency. Here's a question. How much energy is emitted by a light with a frequency of 1.23 times 10 to the 18 seconds to the minus 1? So that's the frequency. So that's the sort of number you hopefully got last time. Energy. Energy. Frequency. Frequency. So our energy, E is energy. H is Planck's constant, which we can look up on our constants page. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Frequency. That's what they told us. So we plug them in to our equation. And then we just work it out. 6.63. E negative 34 times 1.23 E 18. You're going to get a pretty small number from that. Oh, something times 10 to the 16? Yes, I think. Somewhere around there. 10 to the minus 16, even. 10 to the negative 16. Small number. Only a little bit of energy in a wave, but it's still a certain amount of energy, and that can be useful in chemistry to figure out what kind of atoms we've got. That comes later. You might see questions which give you the energy emitted by a light with a wavelength of something. That's a two-step problem. First, you've got to change the frequency into a wavelength using your first equation, C equals F lambda. 
And then once you know the frequency, you can calculate the energy.